Hey guys, Matt, Iron Trap Garage. We're doing another episode of our little uh, car side chats, if you will. It's our little podcast where we're doing some videos. We are back with Dan Morehouse. And Dan, as you guys, if you haven't watched the video, we'll drop a link below. We did a really great video with Dan, um, just kind of doing a little tour with his collection and some, some of his collection, I should say, and some of his cars. So we figured we were back in the area. We figured stop and see him and uh, check out what's new and also do one of these entries for our podcast because you're literally perfect. You're the type of person that we were thinking of. I was going to say crazy person. But I was going to say, hopefully you didn't say hoarder. And no, no, crazy person. Crazy person's better. Yeah, because I'm a crazy person. I'm so. a crazy person too. <laughs> so the way we usually do this, we have a bunch of questions. Or not a bunch. I have six questions right. and we'll just talk about whatever you want to talk about. But basically that's the way we keep ourselves sort of on track. So... Um, Basically, we already went over your name. So what is your, what we call our your iron trap or what is your obsession and the length that you've been obsessed, if you will, or whatever? <laughs> <laughs> Some people would say I have a Cadillac obsession, obsession for sure, but uh, it didn't start that way. It started out with Model A's. Oh, yeah. Yeah, okay. kind of surprising. You didn't yeah, know that. Yeah, I did, did not know that. Did not know that. There's pictures of me playing in a 29 Roadster pickup when I was four and five years old, standing in the gas tank with, you know, 2000 grit because my dad didn't want me to go through the paint, but I was still sanding <laughs> on it. Thought I was doing a good job. But, right. uh, and I rebuilt a chassis for a 29 Roadster pickup, oh, okay. tore it all apart, cadmium plated everything. I wanted to do it exactly how it came out. And that was when I was 14, 15, but then I kept getting taller and taller. <laughs> right. You know, big feet, 6'5. I can't physically fit underneath the steering wheel. <laughs> so Especially I, a Roadster pickup. That's a really small It was one. a really small truck. <laughs> and, you know, I got the chassis 100% done, the body and primer, and put it all together. I was like, I can't drive this ever the way I built it. I should have done something different. So I hung on to the chassis for a long time and went to school. And I was like, I don't want to be like my dad. I don't want those small little cars. And so I decided not to really get into old cars. So, so I was how about long? 18, 19 years old, and I just had this Model A just sitting <laughs> couldn't touch it because I couldn't drive it. So you've been in the cars literally your whole life. Oh, totally. I mean, but, I, but how long is your uh, Cadillac or 59 Cadillac um, obsession where, been? Where that start? It started when I was uh, 19 or 20 when I bought my first two 59s. And how long ago was that? So that was 20, 34 years ago. Wow. That's been a little, it's been a little yeah, while. It's been a little but, while. But actually for the, for the amount of stuff you've amassed or has gone through your hands... <laughs> it's pretty impressive for that period of time, I would say. <laughs> uh, yeah, probably. I mean, you talk about 59 coupes. I, I think I've had close to 50, 59 coupes. That's, a cra that's yeah. crazy. <laughs> yeah, I kind of lost count. I know this. I know I've had in the 20s Woodrose, which is the 59 pink color. I, I've had in the 20s of those. Jeez. These are just my three pretty ones are right behind us. I know. Well, you, it's been... It, Every time we come, it changes a little bit because there's mm -hmm. usually one or two and they rotate in or out yeah. or, you know, yeah. like that one was outside before and there was something else here, a four door right. maybe or something. Yeah, right? probably. It got sold and, you know, so it's kind of interesting to see the stuff rotate, but there's a few that will so stay. A few that will stay forever and they won't rotate. My boys already put their names on them because they're kind <laughs> of obsessed also. They, they inherited that gene somehow. <laughs> it's multi-generational. Totally, yeah. yeah. <laughs> You know, and I got into 59s because uh, coming home from school, my dad was giving me a ride home. I didn't have a car. And we're like talking about cars beginning of summer. And he said, remember that, that stash of Cadillacs up in the mountains? And um, so I was like, yeah, kind of. I don't want to go back up there. The last time we were there, my dad pulled out a 1937 or 8 Willie's Coupe out of the ditch, out of the property that was abandoned for many, many years. And um, this is one time where... Uh, we probably shouldn't have been there because we heard, hey, what are those guys doing? And we didn't even gone to the do door and knocked. And we, we hear these these uh, guys yelling and and then we hear these shotguns click. And I just see my dad start throwing parts. I'm like 10, throwing tools and stuff in the back of his truck. Get in, get in. And I throw, you know, roll over the tailgate as they come around the corner on the gravel road shooting at us. <laughs> so we're sky siding, you know, going sideways on this gravel back road just hightailing it out of there and he's asking me uh, you know 10 years later in the same pickup if we want to stop and say hi and see if they've got any cars for sale so <laughs> yeah, how bold is that so we stop and yeah they got 259 cadillacs that they would sell us they actually had about 40 and i was like no i don't have any money i don't have any money my brother came later and says if you don't buy them i will ah. and you know that kind of solidified it right there it's like okay i'll buy those 259s and i ended up restoring one of them as on the cheap 
did the front seat, spray painted the back cloth so it looked black, took the headliner out, sprayed the inside of the headliner, and I drove it to college for two years. Nice. On um, just about no money, Earl Scheid paint job, the whole works. But So um, was that your, that was one of our questions about the next one was the, the switch that made you, and I don't even know if I'd say, what was the switch that made, we call it the switch, the thing that made you just go um, bonkers for collecting this stuff. So you had one, you had two. Was there something that made you just go, okay, I, I'm going to go all in on 59 Cadillacs or Cadillacs in general? Well, I had that one and my dad ended up finding the car behind me on the side of a road. We could see, he could see about two feet of it. So I had the driver. That mm-hmm. was my only car <laughs> and the parts car. Yep. And we stopped and talked to him. No, it's not for sale. And I ended up stopping for three years and trying to trade, trying to buy it. Yeah. And he's like, no, 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 I don't want to sell it. Because it was a convertible, right? Yeah. So eventually he decided to sell it to me. And by that time I'd already sold my 59 and had a Buick and I had a Pontiac, kind of had some other cars. Yeah. Um, but I sold the 59 and bought a house with a down payment. So kind of like, okay, this is something that I might want to start doing a yeah. little bit. But once I got this, uh, you know, he decided to sell this 59 convertible. I didn't even know what an Eldorado Brits was, but I ended up buying this car for a, more money than I even had. <laughs> um, but um, I had no money to restore it. So you got this nice car that's got potential with no funds, and then you get married and you still have no money. Uh, and then somebody called me up, Kevin Rafferty in, uh, in Klamath Falls, and he had this big Cadillac collection. He was selling everything, and he wanted someone young to buy it, someone foolish to buy it, and buy it all. <laughs> So he talked me into it, and my whole premise was, okay, I can sell everything he gave me, and the profit will 100% pay for this one car and get it restored, and I'll be stuck uh, with just one car, and that's all I'll ever have. So that was the moment when that was the moment where it kind of switched. Yeah, you're like, okay, and and I guess with selling the other car to buy a house, mm-hmm. kind of also was like, oh, I can, yeah, I, I can do something with this. You know, right. my knowledge in the buying and selling. Well, right. But I mean, your father was doing it forever, so you already kind of knew the, the hustle, if you will. I kind of knew it. I just yeah. didn't want to do it. <laughs> <laughs> but it's in your, it was in your genes. It's in my genes. I was reluctant to do it until I was in my mid-20s, actually. It's like, this is, I don't want to buy and sell stuff. But then you then you found the 59 Caddies or Cadillacs. Right. And, and that was your your thing. It became my thing. And it was, it's kind of like the, the rare car that nobody can find. But once you had one and then you have two and then they just start falling into my lap unexpectedly you turn the corner and then I buy 19 at one time and then I buy 11 another place and (laughs) it's and then parts and pick up loads of parts and I was like okay I guess I'm gonna get a collection and then you know my whole premise was to restore one car right right remember that I'm in my mid-20s just I just wanted to have enough money to restore (laughs) one car it took me 30 years and there was a little bit of there's a lot of weaving and, and, and moving around Kids and, and, Kids and, just and a, houses and, and careers and all that stuff. Yeah. Yeah. That's, uh, but you still eventually, obviously. Eventually, yeah. It's sitting it, right behind me. You got to the course. Um, so the next thing that kind of leads into it, what are the, uh, I could say, top three key items in your collection, you would say? I mean, I already know, obviously know one of them, but is there three items? They don't have to be most valuable, maybe, but maybe either most important or most interesting or things that pretty much you'll never sell, you know, or that you have a good story for. Hmm. Well, I have good stories of just about everything. everything. I've got this 59 Brits I'll never sell. Well, there's a lot of cars I won't sell. So. Right. But the 59 Brits is one. Um, uh, probably I have a red 41 convertible that I'll never sell, and I asked my wife to marry me in that car. Yeah. And that, that was the one that now has the LS in it. That yeah. We, that's yeah. killer. That's yeah. the one where you laid rubber for like 30 <laughs> feet, yeah, right in front of a fire station. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I couldn't drive down that street for weeks. Whoops. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it happens. Whoops. <laughs> One of the kids. <laughs> <laughs> One of the kids. Yeah, yeah. starting kids. I told them. That's funny. Uh, so that car is obviously has a lot of importance because of, right. you know, and that's that's Jenny's car, right? Yeah, but she won't drive it. But yeah, that's my car. And then that Firestone sign way in the back. It's probably the last thing because... I remember that from when I was five, and it it 
it was hidden for many, many years and really? finally found it just a couple of years ago in my dad's stash. That's cool. Yeah, because yeah, that's what I, that's kind of the idea is there's, there's obviously most expensive items are most valuable or most rare, but I think most important things, so yeah. to speak, that's, that's kind of neat because it's more of a memory than the what it is or right. value or whatever. Right, and I don't care about the value. The value means nothing. Yeah, I mean, yeah that sign's probably worth something, but not, you know, not enough for me to ever get rid of it. That's cool. And that you you found that you you hadn't seen it in years, or I remember when I was young, and I remember I asked my dad about twenty five years or thirty years ago if, where it was. He said, "I got it." I said, "Well, don't ever sell it." He said, "I won't." And then it, I just lost track of it, and it wasn't until I was cleaning the garage a little bit, and it was buried behind multiple shelves against the wall, kind of hidden. So it just took forever to find it. I mean, I literally looked for a long time for it, and finally <laughs> found it. And it was like, "Holy cow, there it is." Um, so the next thing, we'll switch a little bit of gears. I don't ask this in all of the um, ones we've been doing, but I think it's a relevant one. So with, I'll preface this with, with TV and the term hoarding, hmm. so to speak, a lot of people um, think that anyone that collects anything is a, is a hoarder. What's your take on that term uh, as far as, you know, some people that don't, don't understand this badness that we're all into. Yeah. Anybody that has more than one of something is... You know, even if it's nicely stacked, like you got the hubcaps up there. Oh, he's hoarding hubcaps or whatever. I mean, is it? Yeah. Uh, what's your take on that? Is there is it kind of a difference between? The... Well, yeah, I would say so. Yeah, I am a hoarder. I hoard like one or two things. One right. of them is a '59 Eldorado hubcap, <laughs> but it's it took me so long to find my first one that it's like, and it's so cool of a hubcap. It's my favorite. It's like I don't want to sell any of them, but I think hoarding is hoarding garbage and things that don't have a potential value to someone else. And if there is a, a useful resource or something that can be used for, to, for someone else's project, it's not really hoarding, it's really saving it for someone else to use on their project. Exactly, yeah. And I don't get rid of stuff that has some kind of potential use. Right, right. Uh, as long as it's organized, the unorganized hoards are kind of painful. Yeah, and it's, t and it's tough to, I feel like it's a constant battle with all of us that are, into collecting to yeah. try and keep some sort of uh, order, even you know, to it of some sort. You know, because mm -hmm. I've seen your stuff. You have, you know, the grill stacked up. So there's some sort of at least like items together right. and stuff right. like that. So I can't have mis or disorganization. I've seen so many hordes that are that you can't even walk through, and they don't have no idea what they've got, and it's right. so unorganized. And, and stuff gets damaged or or useful things become no longer useful. Right. Or they forget what they've got. <laughs> it's true, which is good for us as buyers. Yeah. You know, when you're when you're out, you know, digging around and picking, yeah. you know, it's cool because they don't even know they have it. But right, um, it's also I feel like it's disheartening when you go somewhere and you that one thing got wrecked, you know, a rare seat or something that's sitting out in the weather all year. You're like, oh, that would have been good if you just moved it ten feet over into the garage. You right, know? right. So that's uh, but yeah, I think that's important. We've been trying to ask that to people because some people think it's you know. Well, the more average person is going to come to my house and they're going to think I'm crazy and I'm a hoarder. <laughs> but we, but that's the thing. Like when we come here and people come to my place, it's like it's like we're we're tourists. We're like taking photos. I'm yeah. like every time I come to your place, I'm like taking neat artsy photos with the hubcaps stacked up, right. just because it's like where the heck are you going to see this many caddy caps stacked? Right. You know, so right. Uh, I think it's uh, it's kind of neat, and that's I think that's probably I I don't know if it's that way for you, but it's neat going picking to mm -hmm. see other people's stashes, so to speak. Like, you know, you were just talking about you you and Jenny were were traveling a little bit and you were off with the trailer running around and you're, mm -hmm. you know, like you, you were saying what, there's a guy that had an old grocery store next door or something? Mm -hmm. Yep, he lived behind a grocery store and he still had, he, was, he had the old uh, refrigeration cases full of parts. It's like, and you sent me a photo, I'm like, are those grocery stores yeah. like freezers and there's like distributors and things in them? Yeah. Like, what is the, but right. that's, where else are you going to see that? You know, it's just crazy. So. Oh, you meet the best people driving around and the best people I think have hordes of stuff. Yeah. Yeah. They're most interesting. You have to be, yep. you have to be a little broken in the head to do any of this that we do. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, this one's kind of fun. I, I don't know this one from you, but I'd love to hear it. Is there, what is the, one or if there's more than one if you have any good stories about the one that got away whether it was something that you well i should say two for you because i know you've done so much one that um you maybe got it doesn't have to be a car or a part that you got and then sold 
and you're kind of like, man, I, you know, that got away. Or is there, and two, is there one that you tried to get something and you never were able to buy it and it was, you know, got away or, you know, couldn't buy it. <laughs> and I know you've done so much. It's kind of hard to. The second one, I can't think of anything I've tried to buy that I haven't been able to eventually. Oh, all right. Hmm. No, there's nothing I've wanted I haven't been able to go find. Like, is there like a car or something that for years you tried to get and then it kind of lost track of it or, you know, you, or even like, like for me, there's stuff that like I was younger and I couldn't afford it or I could have the means. That's a good question. You had the advantage of your father being so into it. So I feel like if you needed to, like, as far as the means go, you guys were, you no, were we didn't have any means. The means came from buying and selling cars and parts. But I, I mean, as far but, as the means of like. You guys, your dad was willing to help and was experienced in dragging cars out or having a trailer or having a truck. Yeah. You know? So some of my means are I didn't have a trailer, so I passed on some deals because I didn't have a way to get it home. You know, but my father wasn't into it as heavy as... No, typically when I see a deal or something, I, I don't think twice about how I'm going to get it home, where is it going to go. I get it, secure it, and then it's like, oh no, where do I put it? Where is it going? <laughs> But heck yeah, that was a good deal. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, yeah. when I bought 19 at once, I think only two came to my house. The rest kind of went to a couple of my brother's houses. And they got spread out. Wow. Because I didn't have any room. But I didn't right. even think about that when I bought them. Right. But well, as far as getaways, I, there's not a lot that's gotten away um, that I've wanted for myself. Okay. Because I've got everything that I've ever wanted for myself that's already. pretty incredible. Um, so I'm not really hunting for anything. In Was there, was there one that... Um, was there one that maybe you sold that you kind of regret or you're getting rid of? There's been a couple parts I've sold and regretted oh. because I didn't know the value of them at the time I sold oh, them. Oh, what kind of stuff was that? Like the first time I bought all these parts, somebody came by and I had them on a trailer out in the grass out here and he wanted a 60 rear bumper in and I didn't know what the value was. So I just right. made it up. So I sold it like four times less than what I did just a ah. month later because I had no idea what the thing was worth and some trim that I didn't know what it was. Stuff like that until like, you really get educated on things and what the value is. Right. I don't sell anything for retail. It's always below retail. I've always been taught to leave room for someone else to think that they've got the best deal or they can make some money on it, which has been pretty successful means of pricing things. Yeah, that's good. And I price things out based on what I would pay for something at a swap meet. Mm -hmm. That's a good way to you do know? it. That's kind of a, that's actually pretty smart because yeah. it's like a, it's that you're fair with somebody because you know that you'd probably buy it for that yeah. similar price if you were. Putting. If I was hunting for that part, that's what I would pay for it. Right. But you. But after that education, that didn't happen again it didn't happen with, that, any, it, with no, those parts. <laughs> it didn't happen anymore. So, I mean, as far as regret, things going away. There was a 59 um, ambulance I regretted selling, but I needed the money to buy something else. Right. And 10 years later, I bought it from their estate and brought it back home. So I oh, had it twice. That's cool. Yeah. So you kind of got that fix. You, you got that fix by getting it back at least. Right. And then, and then I sold it again. <laughs> but that time you were like, okay. Now I'm ready. ready. It's ready. Yeah. <laughs> Happened with a 59 flat top too. Oh, yeah? Yep. Yeah, sold it. And a few years later, the guy needed some money and I bought it back from him. And a couple of years after that, he called up and said, well, I didn't put it in your name, out, out of your name. It's still licensed to you. Wow. It's like, really? Yeah. Come get it. He came and got it and drove it home. That's crazy. <laughs> yeah. But I wanted it back, but I didn't want it forever. That's funny. Yeah. So um, is there, is he, some of these questions, it's, it's hard because I already know. So we, we have a, what is a North Star item or car or thing? And I already know you have one in your collection, but. What's if, a North Star? North Star is an engine. No. <laughs> yeah, Cadillac. It's a Cadillac yeah, engine. Of course. <laughs> what is your item that's, you know, item or car? Yeah. I mean, again, we're talking outrageous talk. If you could find or know of, or, you know, was there something that's even more rare than this that would be like, you know, is there, there's got to be something that you, is so outlandishly rare, or, you know, that you could find, whether it's a part or a car or something. I'm kind of looking for an education on the most rare 59 Cadillac car or something. That's it. That's it. That's, I mean, that is not the most rare. I've had a 59 Eldorado Bro and they made 99 of them in Italy, but it's not, I don't think it's a well-built car, and I didn't oh. really want it. It's a four-door, and it's not the best styling. It's kind of a futuristic styling, so I didn't okay. like it so much. But the 59 Eldorado convertible is the is there something the best that's, car. Um, why, um, is there something that, uh, as far as 
options or you know like like for me like mine's kind of like the one off you know a, a hot rod that has history that you know there's one of one because of what it is you know like if there was a you know a prototype of this car or anything like that or the you know is there any of that kind of stuff that's still unknown it's floating around uh there was a dealer option called car bar and there was a sticker that went in the windshield and it I don't know what, but it had two. It held two cans and chilled them, wow. and it went underneath the driver's side on the path, on the on the left leg near the steering column, and it kept your cans cool. <laughs> and I've seen one, but I've never seen another one. And it was in a '59, and I didn't own the car, so I couldn't keep it. But it was a dealer option that I've never heard of anybody else talking about it. I've only seen the one. Wow, is it in any of the books or anything? Nope. nope. And it was a dealer option. It wasn't a, like a Cadillac only option. Oh. Yeah. And that is probably the rarest part that I've never had one. Holy crap. Just seen it. Take that down, Mike. We need to. Yeah, good luck. Don't forget that. Good if, luck. If you but find called, one, if you find one, we got to call Dan. Yeah, it's a car bar. Car bar. That's yeah. so cool. It's spelled? <laughs> <laughs> Just, yeah. It's, uh, M-I-K-E. <laughs> <laughs> and then they had in a, this car that's off camera here, you, they had a bar. In oh, there. yeah, I've, I've had four 57 Eldorado Broms. Uh, that's the stainless steel uh, suicide door cars. Mm. And they had shot glasses, magnetized shot glasses that sat inside the uh, glove box. So when you <laughs> open the glove box, shot glasses were in little tumblers and sat inside. So those, are, those so are pretty cool. And you have some put aside for that one? Yeah, I've got, <laughs> some, I've got some all the accessories for that car because it came with an atomizer and um, oh you know, a compact case. and. A bunch of different options, pen, even a pencil and a pen and notepad. Wow. And well, that's crazy with the bar thing. That's I, you probably never heard of it, have you? Never heard yeah. of it. So, that's, so I, I had to think of something that you had never heard of. Well, that's what I was kind of looking for. What is the like? I mean, you found so much of '59 Caddy stuff. So mm -hmm. to to say that you've never found one, it's got to be it's pretty insanely rare, insanely rare. And yep. if you've only ever seen one, I've only seen one. That's, I would say that's what we're looking for here. Something that's just crazy. If anyone has yeah. a send us an email, Iron Trap Garage. <laughs> we'll, we'll send it to Dan. Yeah, right, Dan, thank you. And Dan, yeah. Dan would love to have uh, your horde of NOS ones. Somewhere. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> They're probably, they got to be somewhere. They made more than one, so. I would think so. Some Somewhere in some land far off, there's a guy with a box of old NOS. I don't know what they are. Yeah. <laughs> well, we just ruined the market on them because now everyone's going to know what they are. <laughs> or make it. Yeah. 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 I well, know what it looks like. I know the I know the real one. Wow. That's crazy. Well, very cool. Well, thank you. It was pretty easy. Uh, I just wanted to... It's interesting to hear the background on some of this stuff and, mm -hmm. you know, just you you passing all this down to your kids is, is pretty cool. So I'm sure they're going to have their own stories just like this where you know telling those stories about not specifically maybe 59 caddies but just chasing old cars and you know that stuff did, did they do any of that they're all pretty much 59 caddies or have they gone on their own little they like, own they uh, inherited my or they have my brother's 61 old starfire convertible that they share together cool. um but they buy they've had i think over 30 their cars together wow. and they're 19 and 21 so they're doing all right yeah i'd say they're, they're moving some moving some cars yeah but is there anything that they're collecting that you are you starting to and are again we we've been hanging up a little bit so i kind of know an answer to some of this like you is there anything with that with them that you're noticing that that collecting <laughs> you know iron trap if you will is is good moving to them that isn't you know necessary 59 caddies uh, oh yeah because they can't really compete with my <laughs> my stash of Cadillacs, right. but they're trying not to be hoarders. Although they'll come home with some new old stock fenders, and I gotta put these somewhere. They came home with a bunch of Volkswagen parts. Like, <laughs> okay, put them over there. Yeah. I don't want to see them in my parts, but put them over there. I'll, that'll just be your area. Right. But like you said, your your one your one son, he he's gotten into guitars. So it's like, yeah, he's got gas guitar acquisition syndrome. So he's now he's buying and selling guitars. That's and he's. They're both super talented music, musicians. Um, so he maybe guess, found his little niche, little of, niche. Yeah, that's right. And make some money and, you know, I mean, even today you guys were loading up parts and he's carrying two guitars out and he's, you know, showing me something online that he found he had to go look at. That's cool. So, so it doesn't, and that's a big part, I think, of what we're trying to do with this is, is like it, once the collecting, you know, fascination with neat 
old stuff. It's just, you know, whether it's guitars or cards or cars or whatever it is, right. you know. Right. It just so for him that might be his thing that he takes off and right gets crazy with. <laughs> yeah. I mean, anytime you have a hoard of something, your justification for someone else to have their own unique hoard of whatever they want to collect. So <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome. Yeah. Well, thank you, Dan. We appreciate you sitting down with us for a few minutes and, and telling us some origin stories, if you will. Yeah. And it's super exciting. So. No, thank you. It's thank, fun. Thank you, guys. Later.